So I love to bring new brands to the channel and today I have another new brand to show you guys. This is called Hasili and they are actually located here in New York. However, they make all of their watches in Switzerland. So uh, their movements are made in Switzerland, their cases are made in Switzerland. However, they're based out of New York. Um, and there are a lot of brands like that popping up here in the States where they are making their watches in Switzerland. However, they're based here in New York, which is pretty cool. So um, you do get New York customer service, which is really good. Uh, this is a dress watch, and it also has ties to a brand that uh, was actually one of the first brands that lent me a watch here on my channel. And that was really cool of them to do. It was really early on. I had basically no followers. That was Carpenter Watches. They actually had a hand in helping design this watch. They have no involvement in the brand whatsoever. Uh, I think Dave, I think his name is Dave from Carpenter Watches. Really nice guy. Originally when I reached out to him, very nice. Let me borrow some watches. Um, he actually helped the owner of this brand sort of get started, which is really nice. Um, so it comes in an outer cardboard box. Inner box is this sort of glossy green box. It says the name of the brand right there, New York. Uh, opening that up, inside you get an instruction booklet. I just have that on the side right here. Um, just gives you information on the watch. You get a warranty card. That warranty card's in a little sleeve right there. Uh, it's signed with the brand name and New York and the same thing on the inside of the box right there. And then of course you're getting a watch. Now this is the champagne dial version. Uh, there's a microfiber cloth down here and a hang tag just says Swiss made on it. Um, you know, nice, nice box. Uh, again, you know, I don't really care for boxes. I would always like to see sort of a travel pouch. But uh, again, I have so many travel pouches also that these days it doesn't really matter either way. Uh, but here is the watch and it is a good looking watch. One of the first things that you're going to notice, and I'd like to say it's the hands or the, uh, the, or the dial, but it's the AR coating. And I know uh, that's kind of weird to say, but this gets seven layers. This is a dress watch. It gets seven layers of AR coating on the underside and on the top side of the double domed sapphire crystal. So normally when you have a double domed sapphire crystal, the AR coating is never enough. And they have definitely put enough AR coating on here that you could actually enjoy the dial. You're getting this lacquered dial, so you're getting a lot of uh, you know, light play from that dial, and then you're getting these high polish indices, and you're getting these high polish blued hands. So you're getting a lot of other light play that you're going to miss out on if you're actually, you know, obstructed by the glare on the sapphire crystal. So that's something I really want to sort of uh, point out here, and it's something that a lot of brands don't do well. And I'm thinking about Hamilton right off the top of my head because usually when you have a watch from Hamilton, it costs around a thousand dollars. They don't put enough AR coating on their watches. So when you're looking at it, especially under cameras and, and uh, under bright lights, you cannot see the actual dial. You're seeing mostly glare in that sapphire crystal. Anyway, it's something to be noted. Uh, and it's one of the first things that I noticed when I took this out of the box and looked at the dial. And I was like, wow, I could actually see the dial very clearly. And it has a domed sapphire crystal. Very good. Um, it is a glossy dial. This is the champagne color, as I mentioned, but it's more like an off-white color, I would call it. Almost a very muted tan color, uh, which looks really good. So you are getting an automatic movement inside. It is the STP-111. That is a fossil group movement. Uh, it's a clone of the ETA-2824, if you are familiar. Uh, it is a very good movement. It's a workhorse movement. Um, STP actually have been making these movements for quite some time now. Uh, and they are getting better and better and better. Uh, and it is sort of a alternative to a Salita SW200. So it is slightly less expensive than SW200 because it comes from the Fossil Group. And as they make a name for themselves, I'm sure they'll start charging more for these movements, but they are really good. And you do reap the benefits of that. This is a 50 meter water resistant watch. Uh, it is a dress watch, but you're only getting, I think it's around 10 millimeters thick, 10.4 millimeters, somewhere around there. So 10.4 millimeters. Now I did mention that uh, the Carpenter watches, the uh, the brand Carpenter watches actually was helping uh, the owner of this brand when they were designing the watch, actually helped them out a little bit. Um, and you could see some of that DNA here uh, in the design. It's a very crisp, very clean design, very simple design. Uh, and I really do like it. The, the indices on here are applied. Those are in a very uh, bright 
a rhodium plated color so it is uh is stainless steel i think they're rhodium plated uh, and then you get blued hands now i'm not sure if these hands are actually steel uh actually heat blued or if they are chemically blued uh, i will put a comment down below or i will have uh, i will reach out to the owner of the brand and find that out for sure um and then you have a date there at the six o'clock uh that date just has a little window around it, it replaces the indice at uh, index at six o'clock uh, and it looks good. It is on the smaller side. So uh, technically I like that, but I could see how a lot of people may not like that. Uh, I like it because it really is sort of blends in with the dial. And, and I like the way that a date blends in with the dial rather than actually stands out uh, only in certain circumstances where I think it, it is needed. Uh, in this case, I think on a dress watch, I would prefer no date or a date like this where it actually blends in and doesn't look really uh you know in your face it's a 40 millimeter watch and that carpenter watch that i was talking about uh is the brooklyn gent so that was a little bit bigger than this watch so it's basically 40 millimeters spot on it's uh, a little bit smaller than this watch uh and they made it in a bronze also which i thought was really cool uh but this case is very reminiscent of that or not entirely reminiscent but uh you could see some of that you know uh inspiration in this watch as well. So 48.4 millimeters, 48.5 millimeters um, lug to lug. And then the crown is, I think, around 6.3 millimeters, somewhere around there, 6.3 millimeters spot on. Uh, this gets a leather strap on it. It's an Italian leather strap uh, with a really nice sort of bespoke buckle on it that is signing the brand's name. I'll do a close up of that so you can see. The leather is a very nice leather, and it is signed Helsi on the other side. Uh, I believe it's Italian leather. I don't believe that this, uh, the actual strap is made in Switzerland, but like I said, the movement and the case are made in Switzerland. The entire watch is assembled in Switzerland. Uh, I believe that the movement is actually regulated uh, in five positions, if I am correct, and then uh, there's, uh, there's obviously quality checks that go on and, and things like that in Switzerland. So, uh, essentially a Swiss, a Swiss made watch. It says Swiss made on the dial. Um, and I don't think it comes with an extra strap, but they did send along an extra strap just to take a look at it, uh, on this strap. This is a blue strap. I think it'll look really good with those blued hands. Uh, and I'll do a picture of that so you guys can see. You do get quick release on the straps. So very easy to change uh, if you want to change them. Uh, this watch comes in at around $595. I think it is $595. Uh, I'm not sure if they offer any discounts on that, but uh, all in all, since it's a Swiss made, Swiss assembled watch with a Swiss automatic, uh, and the fact that they put a double dome sapphire crystal on here with so much AR coating, which by the way, AR coating does cost money and a lot of watch brands sort of skip it because it is very expensive. I think it's uh, almost second, only second to Loom. Uh, and Loom is very expensive as well. So AR coating is very expensive. This is a dress watch, so it doesn't have any Loom. So they went to town on the AR coating. Uh, this, you know, whenever you are uh, looking at your watch in direct sunlight, in office lights, anywhere, you're gonna get a very clear reading of the time uh, and very easy. So pretty good, $595. I think it's really nice considering the packaging and considering the watch itself. I think it's a beautiful watch. Um, and the dial is a glossy color, as I mentioned. Um, and it just says automatic right there and then the brand name and then New York. Very, very simple. And as I said, the brand is located here in New York uh, and they are a young brand. They're just starting out. So definitely check out their website. Uh, I know one person already reached out to me over email and asked me about the watch. I think he ended up actually buying the watch, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, and like I said, just a good looking watch. I actually, um, I actually use this in a couple of wrist checks and that's why someone actually caught their eye and, uh, and they bought it. So pretty cool. Uh, very quickly, let me throw it on my wrist. Uh, today I have on a Grand Seiko. This is the Grand Seiko 20th anniversary edition with the lion's mane dial. Uh, gonna have to say goodbye to this pretty soon and I will be very upset because it is a beautiful watch, really just a beautiful watch. So here it is on my seven and a half inch wrist. As I mentioned, uh, this is a 40 millimeter watch, but it's very thin. And on this strap, it just looks cool. I really like this gray strap. I think it looks beautiful. The dial, the combination of the, co the color of the dial, the color of the hands and the color of the strap, I think works really well. I think they did an excellent job uh, overall designing the watch. Uh, like I said, carpenter watches, again, someone who's kind of seasoned in the watch business uh, helped design the watch. 
but is no longer involved in the brand, but you definitely can see uh, the quality. And I was always impressed with that Carpenter watches, uh, with Carpenter watches in general, uh, specifically the Brooklyn Gent. There are other watches uh, I wasn't, you know, too crazy about because they were kind of very um, vintage style, but very, very vintage style with wire lugs and stuff like that. Uh, the Brooklyn Gent was their dress watch, and I was blown away by it to the point where I almost bought one, uh, but I kept myself from buying one because uh, obviously, uh, you know, I can't buy every watch, but awesome, beautiful watch, and really well done, and at a pretty good price of $595. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. No loom shot today because there is no loom on here. Uh, I don't believe there is loom, but I'll give it a real quick shot of, no, there's no loom on here. Um, but that makes sense because it is a dress watch, but uh, tell me what you guys think down below in the comments. I want to hear from you guys. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. It is super helpful for the channel, and I very much appreciate it. Please follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is watchchrisblog, all one word. I have some links in the description. Those links are to Amazon. If you click those links and buy anything, it helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. However, I very much appreciate it. Anyway, thank you for logging on. I'll catch you guys in the next video.